Hello, hello, welcome back. Today I'd like to show you a piece of native sulfur. And this particular specimen is from Indonesia. It's from a volcano called Papandayan in Western Java. And there we have high temperature fumaroles. And uh, these can reach several hundred degrees, three, four hundred degrees. And that means sulfur is liquid in that system because sulfur has a melting point of 115 degrees C. And uh, let me show you this in more detail here. The uh, sulfur was dripping down these fumaroles. This is where I sampled this specimen. And you can just about see the, the drip stones, if you will, uh, here. There's some broken off ends, like here and here. This, is, uh, ha this happened during transport. But uh, you can see the dripping down. It's a bit like, yeah, drip stones in, uh, in a kind of cave system. Uh, only that this was very hot. Uh, once the liquid sulfur is above 200 degrees, it turns out to be orange, little orange lava flows, if you will, and then it cools to this beautiful yellow color. And sulfur is widely used in the chemical industry to this day. Sulfur is not very hard, it's got a very low hardness, and uh, it's got a density of about 2. And um, these days we get most of our sulfur for the chemical industry from uh, the... Uh, uh, petroleum refining. This is a byproduct of it. So let me try to get you a little bit closer here. And uh, <clears throat> once we are coming off fossil fuels, chances that we will still require a lot of sulfur, we might need to go back to harvesting sulfur from volcanoes. And let me kind of turn this around a little so that you can see how this dripping texture actually looks like here. So here you can see that, uh, well, it was the, 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 the liquid sulfur running down here and solidifying in the process. And um, harvesting sulfur from volcanoes was done for quite a bit of our history. Uh, to make gunpowder in the old days, you needed sulfur and uh, uh, you still need it. And uh, this was coming from uh, volcanoes. And uh, the Dutch were very interested, for example, in the sulfur deposits in the East Indies, in Indonesia. But uh, here in Scandinavia, where I am based, uh, sulfur was mainly coming from Iceland for making gunpowder to sustain some of the Swedish military efforts in uh, the time when uh, Sweden was occupying actually quite a lot of uh, what's currently Poland and also northern Germany. And uh, Denmark was also harvesting a lot of sulfur from Iceland. And uh, these days, as I said, we might need to go back to that. There are some spectacular deposits. And uh, here in Indonesia, uh, it's still mined to this day. It's partly used for making dynamite, for making matches, and, well, uh, for also supporting the chemical industry. Here we see some contacts with uh, the uh, rock from which um, I kind of took the sample off. But... Uh, this was a, a rock surface that's uh, like a mold here, and uh, here we see the dripping textures once more. Now, um, sulfur is uh, one of the most widely used chemical uh, or, or mineral for the chemical industry in the world. And uh, we are mainly making sulfuric acid from that, which is used for fertilizing, uh, for gunpowder, as I said, but uh, also for disinfection. Uh, you can make soaps with that, and uh, this is very good for your skin, apparently. And uh, I'd like to close with a little experiment here. And here I actually got a bit of a small piece of sulfur. Let me see whether I can focus in here. So here now, my little experiment, and I'm going to put a flame on that, and let's see if this burns up. And indeed, there is a tiny little blue flame down there. I hope you can see it. And indeed, it starts to actually drip down here, and uh, here we have orange sulfur, and... Uh, Oh, God, I'm not getting a good shot of it. Here we go. And it's still burning, it's still burning. The flame is almost invisible. It makes a blue flame when sulfur is burning. And it smells quite just terrible, to be honest. So I'm going to stop this now, and we are going to watch it now to get yellow.
So see the liquid sulfur up here, it's still kind of runny and um, I can pick it up now. And I can mold it and here see the, the dripping material, the formerly dripping material and uh, it's almost yellow now. So I think that makes the point. Uh, once it's fully cooled, then uh, we will uh, realize that uh, this has become fully yellow and uh, the lowest part is still a bit warm. So uh, I think this was a success. Uh, we made a tiny, tiny little sulfur lava flow and uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Certainly I enjoyed it and I'd like to say thank you once more and uh, join in again. All the very best. Bye bye.